Hi. Welcome once again to our series on engineering mechanics and to our channel, Making Life Easier. We want to look at friction, but before that, kindly subscribe to the channel, share, like, comment, and leave your suggestions at the comment session. We are continuing with our series. And we are looking at friction. Smallest force required to start motion. Let's look at our question today and how to solve the question. Determine the smallest force F required to start the block in moving if the coefficients of friction are us equals 0 0.545 and uk equals 0 0.25 take mass of m and n to be 50 kg and 40 kg respectively and this is our diagram let's see how we are going to solve it good this is a diagram which you have been given, and we have been asked to calculate the smallest force P, which will cause motion of block N. Anytime you are giving questions like this, the first thing you need to do is to draw the free body diagram, is to draw the free body diagram. We are given in the question that ux, which is the coefficient of static friction, is equal to 0 0.45. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 0 0.25. In this case, we have two blocks. We have one up here. And then we have one down there. And for that matter, in solving this question, we need to draw the free body diagram for this first one and also the free body diagram for the second one. We are going to take them one after the other and then we analyze the forces on them. Let's look firstly at the first block, which is M. Looking at the first block M and the way the attachment is made, if the force is applied here, look at the direction. We are moving this direction. If a force is applied at this direction to pull the block in, you realize that the block M is going to move to the right. It's going to move in this direction. And for that matter, if you want to draw the free body diagram, we need to attach, we need to detach the block M from all the other surfaces. This is a cable, and we know that for cables, we always point away from our point of interest. Therefore, the force in this cable will point away from the block, and the one for this will also point away from the block. Therefore, detaching the point M, we are going to get a free body diagram like this. We have our block here, and this is our M. And we said that motion, it is going to, looking at where the force is applied, the block is going to move to the right. If motion is to the right, then frictional force between the two surfaces in contact, the frictional force between the two surfaces in contact, because motion is going to the right, the frictional force is now going to move to the left. And the block has a weight of 50 kg and we know that weight always point downwards therefore our weight will be like this 
we can call it W M. And where the two bodies are in contact, where M and N are in contact, there will be a reaction, which we call the normal reaction. The normal reaction. And don't forget the cable here, which we have cut. And we said that for cables, they always point away from our point of interest. Their point of interest is the block M. Therefore, our cable is going to point away like that. Then from here, so this is our cable. We can call it tension one, tension one. From here, the question says that we should calculate the smallest force which will cause motion of block N. Take note of this. Anytime you are calculating the smallest force which will cause motion, the smallest force to cause motion, to cause motion, now you assume that motion is impending. You assume that the smallest force to cause motion, you assume that motion is impending. Motion is impending. And if motion is impending, then the formula for the frictional force is always F is equal to F mass is equal to US N. And because in this case, we are asked to calculate the smallest force to cause motion, anywhere, anywhere we see F, we can represent it with US N, with US N. Therefore, now, we are giving the mass of M to be 50 Newtons. Mass of M is equal to 50, 50 kg. Therefore, we can calculate WM, and WM will be equal to 50 times 9.81. And from there, we will get our weight to be 490.5 Newtons. Once you have been able to do that, from here, you can see that from the equilibrium equations, if you sum all the y, it should be equal to zero. And from here, we can see that n minus wm should be equal to zero. And we have already calculated wm. Therefore, we can see that our normal reaction will be equal to 490.5 Newtons. Then, our F, which is a frictional force, you can call this frictional force F1 and this normal reaction N1. This is N1, this is F1. Therefore, we can say that our F1, we know US 0.45. Therefore, we can say that because motion is impending, we can use this formula to calculate our frictional force. We can use this formula here. And our frictional force is going to be 0.45 times the normal reaction, which in this case, we have 490.5. And from here, our frictional force is going to be 2.20.75 Newtons. And now the only thing left there is T1. If motion is impending, we are still in equilibrium. And for that matter, we can also apply our equilibrium equation and say that sum of F of x is equal to zero. When we are moving to the right, it's positive. Therefore, from here, we can say that T1 minus F1 will be equal to zero. And we have calculated our F1 up here. Therefore, from here, we can say that T1 is equal to 220.75 Newtons. Therefore, we are done analyzing block. Now we are left with analyzing block N. We are done analyzing with block M. We are now moving on to analyze block N. Now looking at where the force is applied to pull this to cause motion, you can see that block N is going to move to the left. And if block N is moving to the left, then between this contact surface, the frictional force will be moving to the right because motion is going to the left, then our frictional force will point to the right. The same applies to our contact here. The frictional force is also going to point to the right. 
Therefore, let's draw our free body diagram for N. So for block N, for block N, now our free body diagram is going to look like this. This is our block. This is our block. And then we have the tension here in this cable. We can call it T2. And the, the, the frictional force between block N and M, in the first instance, we're labeling them as N1, F1. So we are still going to maintain that. This is going to be our, in the first instance, for the one we indicated for this block, you can see that we indicated the normal reaction as moving up. This is the contact between M and N. For here, we indicated that N1 was moving upwards. According to the Newton's third law of motion, to every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, if this one was pointing upwards, and the normal reaction here will point downwards. This will be N1. And in the same way, because we said that motion will be moving to the right, therefore our motion will be moving to the left. Therefore, our frictional force will point to the right. And it will be opposite to what we indicated for the first block up there. Therefore, this can also be F1. And then we were given the mass of block N we're giving the mass of block N to be 40 Newtons. We can represent here as W N. And here, this is a pulley. This is a pulley. And anytime you have a pulley where cables are attached, the forces in them are equal. Therefore, from here, we can say that T1 here is the same as T2, which is down here. Therefore, we can say that T2 is equal to T1. And we have already calculated T1. Now let's come to down here at this downside where the block N is making contact with the ground. We said that motion is going to be to the left. Therefore, at that side also, our frictional force is going to be is going to point to the right. And that frictional force, let's represent it with F2. And because the weight is on the ground, there's also going to the contact between them, they are in contact horizontally. Therefore, our normal reaction is going to be vertical. It's going to be vertical, and we can call that as N2. And don't forget our force which is applied, the, our force which is applied to force motion. So the force is pointing away like this. So this is our force F2. No, this is our force F. Sorry for that, not F2. That is our force F. Good. This is force F. So from here, we can analyze the forces on block N. First of all, let's calculate the weight. The weight WN will be equal to the mass, which we are giving as 40 times 9.81, and our weight to be equal to 392.4. Newtons. Once you have been able to do that, now we can calculate N2. We can calculate N2 from equilibrium conditions. If motion is impending, we said that motion is impending. So wherever we see the frictional force, we can represent it with USN. So this one is USN2. And F1, you have already calculated F1. So there's no need to represent that with that. So from here, we can say that sum of all forces in the Y should be equal to zero. And when we are moving up, it's positive. When we are moving up, it's positive. From there, we can say that minus N1, N1 is pointing down. Therefore, it's going to be minus. WN is also pointing down. It's going to be minus WN. But N2 is pointing upwards. Therefore, we have plus N2 is equal to zero. And from there, we can get N2 is equal to N1 plus WN. And N1 had been calculated from here. N1 is 490.5. And we have calculated WN, which is 392.4. Therefore, our N2 is going to be our entry is going to be 882.9 Newtons. 
Once you have been able to do that, we can also calculate have gotten our end to, therefore we can use that to calculate our frictional force too, which is a frictional force between N and the uh, ground. Therefore, we can say that F2, because motion is impending, we can use the formula USN2, because motion is impending. Take note of that. And from here, we can get F2 equals US, which is US, which is 0 0.45 times our N2, and our N2 is 8.82.9. And from there, our frictional force two will be three nine seven point three newtons. Once we are done with that, now we can get our force P. How do we get our force? We can get our force F. We can get our force F, which is the smallest force required to cause motion. And from there, we can say that sum of all forces in the X will be equal to zero. We are taking this direction to be positive. Therefore, from there, we can get F is going in the opposite direction. We are going to get negative F plus F1. Look at the direction. It's in the same direction as positive. So we are going to get F1 plus F2 is also in the direction of our positive. Look at the direction, it's positive. And then we can also get T2, which will also be positive based on the direction, will be equal to zero. And from there, we can say that, sorry for that, let me continue down here so that I don't clean, I don't, I don't clean anything. So from here, we can say that our F, will be equal to F1 plus F2 plus C2. And our F will be equal to, we have already calculated F1, which is 220.75. We have our F2, which is 397.3. And then we have T2, which we said that is equal to T1. And T1 was equal to 220.75. 220.75. And from there, our the minimum force to cause motion will be equal to 838.8 newtons. And we are done solving this question. It was quite simple. However, if you have any question or any suggestion or any comment, you can let us know as we help you to understand any concept which you are about to understand. Once again, thank you for keeping in touch and staying with us up to this point. Kindly subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell, and also leave comments and suggestions at the comment session. See you in our next video. For now, bye-bye.